So welcome to End User Tools presents the Old World Bullworm OWB discussion on training from mobile to desktop. This is an unusual way to do our training. We're doing it all together. I usually train everyone on how to use the mobile app, which in this case is ArcGIS Field Maps and collect the data. And we have the honor of having Melanie Maroney here from the Hub GIS group to support some training on the ArcGIS web apps that will help you along. So welcome to this training. Um, I wanna share a couple of links in the chat box for you that will be helpful before we get started. And I'll show you what those are. So the first link is this mobile data collection tools site. You will find the first half of the main page to be all documents and related to, and then the bottom half of video gallery. This training here today is being recorded. That allows people who maybe couldn't make it this morning to review the training as everyone got, or it also allows you to kind of go back and review if you forget. Sometimes once you get out there in the field, you you notice things that you didn't at first and then the training is helpful to review that'll show up down here in this video gallery and it's even categorized so if you want to go pest program you can see these are the trainings on pest program data collection already this year and it will show up here you can also go ahead and search in the search bar you also have on the top half under pest program specific training documents there is OWB listed, and here's your trapping documents to support that data collection. There's a user manual and a quick reference. The quick reference is just one little page. It's meant to be kind of a cheat sheet after you already know your stuff. So that's what we would recommend maybe printing and bringing with you out in the field if you needed it. I think you have um, Nick helping you along and, and lots of excellent support. And from the look of the poll that you all responded to, it looks like you're really taking advantage of some training to make sure you're ready to head out there. So maybe you never will need a quick reference guide, but if you do, here, here these documents are. So you've got Got a document and you've got a video that will show up give me about a week to get that there and then it will be available to you secondly we have a training quiz link so this is what that should look like this quiz question three has asked you for your email address and you'll you'll have to put that in carefully if you are correct in putting in your email address the second you submit the quiz you will get an automated email response that says you completed this course it helps me to see that you did come that i've got a little record that what i told you you responded to and were able to answer i give you this link early because i don't mind you doing this quiz as we talk at all it's just meant to be a little knowledge check and it gives you that email so if you want to pass that up to your supervisor sometimes i list these kinds of things quarterly when i have a list of accomplishments that i want my manager to know about in any case you will get a little response there so be careful with that question three so those two links you're welcome to have a look at as we speak. I just want to get those to you first off. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. I can see that many of you, most of you, completed ArcGIS field maps training and feel pretty comfortable with the device you're using. And some of you feel pretty comfortable with survey protocol. And also that, hey, I'm here, aren't I? That counts for sure. You came to this training, here you are. We're a pretty small group, so um, it really won't bother me at all if you want to unmute and ask a question at some point. I'm going to kind of move through it quickly and then leave room for questions at the end. So if you feel like you need to interrupt, please go ahead. You can also raise your hand or I will be, I, I do keep a side eye um, on the chat. And because Melanie's here, I know she'll help out with that too. So feel free to use those avenues if you need to interrupt me. What are we gonna talk about today? We kind of started this. I just wanna give you a little overview of what to expect. We're gonna go for about an hour and the first half will be the mobile application the using ArcGIS field maps and the second half will be Melanie talking about the web apps so it's kind of as you can see building in responsibility so if you're going to be collecting data the first half of this is really all about you if you're going to be editing or monitoring data the second half is all about you and so it's up to you all if you know and and Nick you can feel free to inform your your people what you would like but 
If you get through that first half and it doesn't apply to you, you're welcome to go ahead and run along and enjoy the rest of your day. If you want to stay on and just see how it works, that is also totally fine. There's nothing secret here about that responsibility of editing, and it might be helpful for you to stay on and just understand that. So for the mobile app, application. The topics that we're going to discuss are these, the field maps application. We're going to talk about how to sign in, which involves two different URLs to sign in. There's an official versus a training one. You may already have been introduced to this already this week. We're going to go over trapping workflows a little bit, um, how that looks in the application and, and kind of some terminology that we use. And we'll look at the iPad and kind of demonstrate how that's used. And very important, we'll always go over some caution areas, some things you should especially be careful of. Um, and then Melanie's half, she's going to be talking about how to record lab findings. So that would be, um, that's Todd's piece of the puzzle. And the way these kind of work out, I'm going to give these little separations. There are two web apps. So the top three bullet points are all related to editing the data that's already been collected. Um, with updates. So recording the lab findings, some QA, QC, and maybe other editing that needs to be done. And then the second web app is really all about what's going on, how to filter some data, and perhaps export to CSV or print a map if needed, those kind of things. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're just going to jump right into this mobile application. ArcGIS field maps. Many of you completed that training. If you haven't already, I would highly recommend that you go on back to, to that mobile data collections webpage and have a look at that training. There are 10 short videos that probably take about an hour to complete all in one, but you can also go back and just watch a three minute video or watch a five minute video and refresh your mind if you need to. So take advantage of that. It is new. What is field maps? It's a collection of these five old mobile applications, some of which you may have used in the past. The one that probably sticks out is Collector. And Field Maps is built on the Collector application. It's the same code base. And then the company is pulling in features from these other applications, Explorer, Tracker, Navigator, Workforce. And those will continue to kind of pop in as the company builds this really robust application called Field Maps. In the meantime, it should look really just like Collector. So if you've used that in the past, you're going to feel real comfortable. And uh, the map itself is pretty simple and intuitive to use. Nick has pointed out that state the stage portal this morning is giving a problem. Yes, we're aware of a problem, Nick. We're going to see where we get when I get to the demo. But the stage portal is down, and they are working on it this morning. Nick, you're, you're on point. That is a server issue. Thanks for bringing that up though. When you first open field maps, you get something that looks kind of like this and it's a sign in page. You have the option to sign in with ArcGIS Online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. PPQ is always gonna choose this sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. This is FedRAMP um, secured. And so this allows us to enter PII or sensitive data. So we're always gonna pick that enterprise button. And then you'll get something, the first time you sign in, you'll really only have these bottom two options, specify a new URL or a scan code. And you'll select specify a new URL and then type in manually using the keyboard that URL address. And after that, you'll get what you see here. Eventually, after you've signed in before, the field maps application does kind of collect and hold on to that URL that you've typed in. And then you can just go ahead and tap this on that screen and you'll sign right on in. It will go to the EAUTH screen and ask you for those credentials and then you'll sign in. But this right here, this maps.mrp is our production portal. And this is the one I want to show you because this is where you should collect real data. But this brings me to that point of two URLs. Each year when End User Tools creates a map, we also create a copy of that map. It's what we use first to test and train and, and demonstrate and make sure that there's approvals. And then we build the official map in that official production portal. So this leaves you with an ability to train 
or to practice or to do demonstrations like I would want to do today if I can get in. All of those things should happen in the training map. But the big thing to pay attention to here is signing into the correct portal when you sign into field maps. If you are in an official data collection portal, this MRP, let me give you a couple boxes here so you can kind of see the difference. This top one here is our production portal, maps.mrp.usda. And the bottom one here is maps-stg.mrp. That STG is your little clue for it being a stage portal. And this is where the training map is held. So the, the rule that you need to remember is that training data must only be entered in the training URL in the stage portal and real data you must be in that mrp.usda portal so just be careful that you don't enter training data in an official data collection portal and vice versa you don't want fake data in a real layer and and other way around be very careful which one you're in and the rule really is when in doubt sign out but there are a couple of clues for instance you, um, you might know that you signed into this stage portal, but also the maps within the stage portal, all of the training maps are titled training in all caps and then the title. And all of our training maps also have kind of a boring background. The base map is just a light gray canvas. There's no imagery. So those are tip offs, but when in doubt, sign out. So that's a, that's a big one for you to pay attention to. Another thing to bring up with you all is that the field maps application is specifically designed to operate in disconnected mode. It is part of the app's strength when we're out there in the field and we may be far away. In your case, you're probably most likely not going to need disconnected mode, but if it's something you want to use, this workflow is a great one to work out. It requires being connected to Wi-Fi, downloading an area of interest to your device, disconnecting from Wi-Fi, collecting data onto your device where it's saved in that area of interest, and then at the end of the day, connecting back to Wi-Fi and synchronizing your data. So just a reminder of the way that workflow works with a little bit of prep in downloading that, that map area, you can really um, work without being connected at all. Some terminology on trapping workflow. So the way that this works in our field maps applications is that first visit to a location we refer to as placing the trap. In placing the trap, you are also installing a trap. There is an install date field on the form and it places physically the trap, a symbol on the map. So that physically places the trap site. And then all future visits are considered a trap activity. And those are recorded on a related table within that first placing a trap form. So the first visit places the trap, it installs the trap based on your entry on that form of the install date, and it places a symbol on the map for you. And then future visits, trap activities. Well, so there is some workflows too that kind of get people confused. And so I like to go over this one, the relocating a trap. If you consider relocating a trap, there are two entries, data entries that should happen to that that original trap. Number one, you should enter a trap activity of remove. If you think about it, it's probably kind of obvious, but these two things you want to keep in mind. So the last trap activity on that site should be remove. And then you want to update the trap status there as inactive. Then you can go ahead and you know walk this dotted line to the new location, physically move that trap to the new location, and you'd begin again by placing the trap. So these two act, these two steps, the trap activity of remove and update the trap status to inactive are important. Sometimes folks think if you enter a trap activity of remove that the actual symbol on the map should disappear, and that is actually not true. That trap symbol should remain on the map. It's actually pretty important. It's critical to data capture. The entire history of that trap location is recorded and retained with the last activity as remove and the trap status should be inactive. So you'll see that symbol remain, but the status inactive changes the symbol to that little red X. So that's how you know that um, that you've completed those entries, but the symbol should remain. So that is that is something you should have. Kind of similar, the end of the year process 
is usually just these top two, the, the trap activity of remove and updating the trap status to inactive. You're not moving a trap, but you still want to update that trap to having been removed <clears throat> and the status of inactive. So that would be the end of the year process as well. Let's see if I can get in. So if I open field maps on my PPQ iPad, which has all the field um, survey apps here, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And I've actually got both URLs just waiting for me, the production version and the stage. And I'm going to go ahead and try stage and see what happens. And this is the error I'm getting. So I'm going to give you some big caveats here and say, don't ever do this. <laughs> don't do like I do. I feel like a parent right now. Um, don't ever sign into a production portal and, and put in play data. However, the second half of our, our training today is with Melanie showing you how to edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this with you all today. And I am able to remove these points later, but please don't do this yourselves. And um, for those of you who might be using an iPhone, this is going to look the same. The, the, um, the only difference here will be, so I'm going to look for the OWB surveyors group. I don't have, um, I don't have a map downloaded, so we're doing this live, which I did want to do anyway. When you download a map, one restriction is that it restricts you to that map download and you can no longer see the full map. And with me being in Colorado, I don't want that to happen. So I'm not gonna worry about that this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and do a whole lot of things that we shouldn't normally do just with our technical difficulties that we're dealing with today. Um, but from an iPhone view, you will see the same map, the same options, the same everything on a smaller screen. One thing that restricts you a bit is when the data form is open, it does take up your whole screen. So you kind of have to pull it down to view the map and kind of toggle back and forth a little bit. So I'm showing you on the iPad, which is going to give you a broader view of everything. First off, the map is loading. You want to give it some time. You can see the GPS. GPS accuracy is working pretty hard. I'm in my basement and it, it probably will. It usually does come down to this 30 feet, amazingly enough, under all this concrete. Um, but there's a few things that I want to point out as this map is loading and I can see it's still working on things here. We have some icons along the top. This is a layers icon, a search and an overflow. We have the map title here. If you were in a training map, it would say training in all caps right at the beginning and then have the same title to follow. You can see we have a beautiful imagery map and it is zoning in on my location. I'm gonna zoom out because I wanna get to Chicago so that I can show you some of these reference layers here. I'm gonna open this layers list and show you those. We've got the main 2022 trapping layer, which is where we're entering data. And then the rest of these are reference layers. They are not editable and they pop in to start with as defaulted to not visible. There's a little toggle that might be hard for you to see. If I want to turn those on, I can go ahead and toggle them on and um, and use them. I know in some in some of these, they're gonna be more important than others. And I'll let Nick follow up with which are important to you just for the sake of this quick little demo. Um, the maps loading, I'm gonna turn, actually I'm gonna turn these all on just so you can see what that looks like as it loads. We have this search option here. If you want to, you can, it's enabled to search by the trap ID and the site name. So if you were to enter a site name or a trap ID, I know that I have one that I happen to call test01. It will find that for you and you can you can locate it on the map. Um, I turned on all of the layers. So this overflow menu has a legend, which could be really helpful to you. All the layers that are currently vis visible or enabled will show up here in this legend. I can scroll up and see what those should be looking like on the map when they show up. Um, we also have a markup tool, and this is 
unique and new to field maps, this, this is a markup layer that allows you to literally mark up the map. A couple of important points about the markup layer, if I turn it on, I can add a point, I can add a label to that point and notes to the point, I can zoom in a lot further, I can draw on the map an area or a line, um, I can do the same thing um, here, I can add a label, add some notes. Um, so the markup la layer literally is just in order for you to mark the map on your device. But there's two really important rules to the markup layer. Number one, it's not an official data collection layer. So be very careful you're not adding comments to the markup layer that should be in the main form. And also it is really it is private to your device unless you find a way to share it. And I'm connected to Wi-Fi and this is the share button here. I can share a screenshot. Um, as it's still loading things, it's gonna give me some more options to share the whole layer, um, but it's not easily done. So two things about the markup layer, not an official layer and not easily shared, but private to your device unless you do. So just note those things about this new feature. I turned on all these layers, so it really takes a long time to load, but I wanted you to see what that looked like. And then I'm gonna close this markup layer and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off some of these more complex layers and just leave our data collection layer for the sake of demoing it. So let's say you wanna add a point or add that place a trap to place a trap the first time. You've got this add button at the lower right, which will open a data form. Now this is gonna immediately relocate me. Um, this button tells your device and tells field maps, I want you to place me on the map. And so it's gonna immediately find me, bam, in Colorado. And you can see we're getting closer and closer on um, GPS accuracy. I'm gonna go ahead and leave myself in Colorado because I do, want to be able to locate and delete these points. I'm going to move away from myself a little just so you see the symbol. This blue dot is my actual location. So hello from Colorado. I'm going to place this point up, up over here where you can see it easier. And see, there's a little green dot. That's our initial symbol. You can see we've got a data form here with asterisks after fields that mean they are required fields, some that do not, which mean they're there, but they're not required. You don't have to fill them out. And we can see the current status is autom automatically begun at current. This is where you would change that to inactive in that relocate workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and do a practice one. Again, we're in the wrong portal to be playing, but um, I'm going to do that for the sake of us demoing. I think I'm on test four. You would complete this according to survey protocol. I'm not going to worry about that one. You should follow survey protocol on filling out these fields. I obviously don't know that, so I'm going to be kind of off here. I'll say outlying. We're way outlying, aren't we? And then I can see I've got a blue submit button here, which means I could go ahead and submit. Someone's probably already noticed I'm missing a required field, but I'm going to go ahead and hit this to show you what happens. I'm immediately told one attribute failed, and I've got now red a little note here required. If you were on your iPhone and some of this form was missing, if you hit view, it'll kind of pop that up to the bottom for you to say this one, this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and update that. If I tap the, the calendar, if I tap that field, a calendar shows up for me. Now this is restricted to this year. So if I go back far enough, we're in the middle of the year. So either way, um, you can see it doesn't let me go any further. Um, but let's say I accidentally choose something um, that's the wrong date. This actually is something I do frequently, you know, maybe scrolling up, you pick a day or whatever. In order to go back to today, you can just tap today here, and it's going to jump you right back to today's timestamp and, and, and set you up nicely. The other thing you can do is tap the field again and close that calendar view, which I like to do just to avoid that problem in the first place. And then we want to go ahead and check through, is everything correct now, and submit. So that placed our trap. And that would also have installed our trap based on our install date that we have here. So we've installed a trap. But let's say we're visiting. Let's say it's been two weeks and we're coming back to visit. 
So we'd come back to a map and we would locate our trap site on the map. And in order to open it, we're going to tap that symbol on the map, which opens that form we just filled out together. But let's say it was two weeks ago. And here's here's our form in view in view form. In order to add an activity, a trap activity of maybe we're coming to monitor it, you can either tap this link button here at the bottom or scroll to the end of the data form where you will find that link button again and it's labeled OWB activities. And now we're going to add an activity and it automatically defaults to monitor, but if we need to, for instance, if we were relocating, we could go ahead and remove at this point. In this case, I'm going to leave monitor and complete this form. I'm not going to leave any comments. Let's get today's date and then close it. Actually, I'm going to say test just to be sure. And now we have this option of was a sample collected and the responses the options are yes or no. If I pick no, we're done. If I say yes, you can see we've got another couple questions here on that sample collected. So let's say I'm going to put in a sample ID. I'm just going to say test and a sample type. I'm just going to choose one and I'm going to look at my data form one more time and hit submit. So there we've placed a trap and we have completed a um, trap activity. In the case that we would need to edit here, you do have the ability to edit your own entries. You can edit, but you cannot delete. And so you would go ahead and hit this pencil or again, go back to the main data form. That was that activities form. And then look for this edit. Oops, I've gone too far. So I would select the point and then I'm gonna hit this pencil or scroll up to the bottom where I see edit and that pencil again. And that just opens that main data form. All of the fields are now open for editing if you need to. So I could go ahead, let's say I'm saying this is actually inactive now or do, I'm gonna say do. And then I'm gonna hit submit. And you can see that symbol changed from green to orange as if it was do. So that would be how you would edit to change that status to inactive or whatever status you need to, to update that. So in the field, in your downloaded map or in your live map as we're doing now, you have the ability to edit your forms, go back and, and edit your forms, but you don't have the ability to delete. So this is another good reason why I would not ever practice in the production map as we are today. I can't give you enough caveats about that. Please do all this kind of practice in the training map. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint and just cover a couple of caution areas. Um, I think we've hit it pretty well, but make sure that you're in the correct URL when you sign in. Today, we did not follow that principle. I apologize. You want to be in, a, in the stage URL to practice in the training maps and in the official one to enter official data. Never mix those up. Um, be aware of that disconnected data workflow and use it if you can. The app itself is really designed well for that. The submit button is going to tell you if there's something missing, and so that's really helpful. Make sure that you're being careful with data collection. Um, I, can't, I can't stress this enough, and it's not meant to be an insult, but just take that one more moment to look at the data form and be sure that you have entered things as you meant to and that you haven't missed anything. Um, that markup layer, it's there for you. If you find a good use for it, great, but just be aware of the two rules for the markup layer. Number one is, um, you know, it's not an official data collection layer. Don't put comments in that markup layer that should be in the comments field of the main data form. Not an official layer. And secondly, that it is really secret. It's like a dear diary to your device unless you find a way to share it. So it really is just a private layer to you. You may need help. We've talked about a lot already and it and I know you have your contacts in place, but wanted to give you some reminders. Alec Ormsby is the National Operations Manager. You've got your Illinois contacts. I know Nick and Greg are excellent at trying to make sure that you have all the information you need. Anything survey protocol, anything um, training request related would go to Alec. 
If you're having trouble with your device, open a ticket with CECIT. If you need access to the map itself or having troubles with that application working, go to your supervisor and your supervisor has a couple of places to go to. The local field GIS specialist is Mindy Shad. She's here. She's awesome. She's very excellent in helping to support this kind of stuff. And then there's an email address there to webgis.connect. Um, so these things are all there for you in a line. And all things training, remember that mobile data collection tools web page that I showed you a little bit earlier. Um, just another ping, don't forget to take this quiz. It helps me and you. Um, I, I consider it kind of a personal favor and I use this kind of thing as metrics to show whether what I tell you is kind of getting across and it kind of helps me out too. Finally, I like to take a, a few questions. I want to move on to Melanie, but I wanted to give you my information. You can always reach out to me. As the person who designed this and worked with everyone all the way up, um, I love to take accountability for the way these things are rolled out and make sure that you feel supported. Are there any questions at this point? This would be the point if you're only collecting data in the mobile app and you would like to go about your day, you're welcome to leave. We're going to move on to the web apps, which will cover an editing component and then that reporting monitoring component. So we've kind of already covered this top bit. I got myself a nice little X there. We talked about the field maps app and how to collect data. And now I'm going to turn it over to Melanie. She's got two web apps and she's going to talk about those. Melanie Maroney, go ahead and unmute and I'll just support you with uh, moving slides along. Thanks, Jenny. Hi, everyone. All right. Let's go on to our slide. So this first web app is going to be for um, editing. And we can go on to the next slide. So this is kind of a video on how to access it. Basically, you go to your home page of the MRP portal, you click groups, and you can type in OWB in which you'll open the OWB editors group. And then the recently added content will be the app. So that's how you open it up. And it's gonna be the same for the reporting um, web app. All you do is uh, go to the reporter, reporting group of OWB instead of the editors. And it should be the first app in that group. If you're not in the groups, ask Nick or Alec about that and I can get you added to them. So in the editing web app, um, we have some widgets they're called. A web app is basically just an interactive data tool that uses buttons called widgets to perform different functions. So in this editor app, we have the filter, which is that first one. And Jenny, yeah, perfect. Um, we have edit, we have um, a batch attribute editor, which edits a bunch of features at the same time. We have select and export, and we have base map selector. Um, and there's also a attribute table widget as well. So from there, I'm gonna give you a demo. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen right now. Here's our editor web app. We got there just by going to our groups and launching the web app. Um, so let's explore the widgets that I talked about. Um, and you'll see just upon opening, we have the widgets we talked about up here. They kind of act like tabs, so you can click them and it'll open. Um, we have the layer list that also acts as a legend. And if you scroll down, you'll see them. And then at the bottom, we have the attribute table that kind of lets you view the data in like an Excel type format. So first, let's go to the filter widget. Um, it's automatically enabled, so that's the first one we're seeing. Um, the filters are divided by layer, and the layers they're divided by are these first two, the QC flags and the all data. These are actually the same layer, but um, they're filtered to show you um, the traps that need immediate attention that are in the QC flag layer. Um, basically, a QC flag is a field within the data that is generated by a script that runs every night to find potential errors that the program has outlined to be possible issues when entering data. 
So like one of the flags for this program is uh, flagging traps that have duplicate entries. So I separated them out here so that you can kind of just focus on the QC flag one if you want to, but you can also turn it off and work with all data. Um, so that's how we have it divided. Um, and so all you have to do is activate the filter that you're gonna work with. So, oh, sorry about my dog, it's a male lady. Um, you, we have the QC flag layer um, activated. So I'm gonna activate the QC flags filter and I can just choose different things about it. So I can um, get a drop down of all of the different QC flags that are present in the layer and Right now we only have one that has a flag, so it's only giving us one. So I'm not gonna select it. Um, QC status is something we'll go over in a little bit, kind of that helps you track your edits. The um, data filter for all data is similar, but it kind of lets you um, narrow by trap ID if you wanna do that and QC status and state, even though I think this is only Illinois at this point, we can add in different filters. If you'd like, just let me know. Um, so that's how the filters work. Kind of helps you narrow down your data. Um, let's go to the editing tab. So this is where you can edit and um, add features. All you have to do is select a point that you want to edit. And it'll have this pop up here. And because we're in the QC flags, let's check what the flag is and fix it. So I'm going to scroll down, just kind of look at the data as I go. So here's the flag. The sample was taken, but the lab value is incorrect. So let's go to the lab data, which is going to be in our activities table. So all you have to do is um, expand this related table, um, scroll down again, and then you're going to get the um, activities data. So we can see we have one activity for this trap. And if we select that, that's how we just how we get it. And if you want to add a feature, all you do is press this create new feature button, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to select my um, activity that it's flagged. And let's see. So the flag said that the QC, um, that there was a sample taken, but the lab has not checked it yet. And this is just basically to ensure that the lab and Todd is, um, you know, marking if the results were negative or if they were positive, but the, because the um, app automatically puts them as negative. So we just want to make sure that's correct. And so the lab would go in and say, yes, checked. Um, and all you have to do is press save to make your changes permanent and then go back. So here we are back in the main trap um, attribute data. And we can see that there's still going to be a QC flag, but that's because the script runs every night. So it doesn't know that we fixed it yet. But if I came in back in here tomorrow, um, there wouldn't be a flag anymore because I fixed it. So, but there's still the problem of, um, Oh, it disappeared. There it is. <laughs> um, there's still the problem of it, the, the QC flag, it's still there. So imagine there was a bunch of points and you kind of wanted to work through them incrementally, but you're still seeing a point that you already edited. And so for that reason, we made there be a QC status field. So this is just kind of to help you track what edits you've made. Um, so for this one, I could say complete with no exceptions. That means I just completed it. The QC is fixed. Complete with exceptions is for when there's a flag, but it's not applicable to that specific trap. So the QC flag is going to keep popping up, even though you know that that point is correct. So in that case, you could do complete with exceptions. But this one, it's, it's correct. So I'm just going to say that. And... Hey, Melanie. Yes. 
Um, so, so basically updating the QC status field manually is, is basically what it would do and it's nightly, nightly script. So that's what, that way we can do it basically, um, and have that QC status change immediately. Exactly. Kind of okay. to get it disappear from here and it won't disappear from that QC flagged filtered layer, but it's going to, um, just kind of mark it as like one that you fixed. So in our filters, we can, I'll show you how we can um, filter out the ones that we have marked as QC status complete. Okay, thanks. No problem. Um, and if I press cancel here, I didn't press save. So it's gonna say, would you like to save the current feature? This is kind of just a check to make sure that um, you're not forgetting to save or not save. If you make changes that you don't wanna keep, just press no. So, but I want to save it. So I'm going to press yes. So it's still in our QC flag layer and I don't want it to be. So I'm going to enable the um, filter and then I'm going to say, ah, sometimes it takes a minute to catch up. So let me refresh. So I just fixed that QC and now I don't want to see it in my QC flag layer anymore. So the QC status is automatically selecting the complete no exceptions. So I'm not seeing it. If I deselected it, it's gonna pop up again. So yeah, just use this field to track your edits. And if you want to see ones that you've, um, you know, marked as complete, you just um, unselect this QC status filter. So that's how that works. Now on to batch edit. Um, this one can be used for site name as well as the QC status. So if you have a bunch of points that you know are correct and you want to get them out of your QC flag layer, you can select them and edit them a bunch at once. So let's work with all data for this one. Um, it's selecting both in the attribute batch attribute editor widget. So I'm just going to deselect this um, QC flag one just to make sure I'm just working with this. Um, and then from there, I can zoom in. I could turn on layers that I want to work with. So let's say I wanted to view the site names and kind of name them as I go. Something that I believe Nick might do. You can press this extent button and grab all of them at once. You can see it grabbed three and it's showing me it grabbed three traps. Uh, I could also use this freehand polygon drawer where, in which I can just make my own shape and it's gonna do the same thing, select all three. So I can mark these as complete, no exceptions. I can keep the existing value. Um, this is going to overwrite whatever entry you already have in there. So just make sure that when you're batch selecting that it's something that you want to apply to all the points you've selected. Um, so let's say I just wanted to select this one and name the site name as ORD, where it is, and then I just press save. And now this point is going to have um, ORD is the site name. It's such an easy way to edit a lot of features at once, unlike the edit data one where you kind of have to edit them one at a time. So just use whatever's best for you, but with caution, of course. So let's go to our next tab. We have the select and export data. There's two ways to select and export data. Um, you can either do it from here or from your attribute table. But let me show you this widget first. Um, make sure select is dark green. And from there, you can just draw. And you'll grab all the points that you made in your rectangle. So you can see we grabbed 13 site name areas. And we grabbed three trapping surveys in our all data table. And with these three dots, we can kind of view the options of what we want to do with the data. We can export them to CSV, flash, pan to, zoom. Um, 
we can view in the attribute table. So kind of get there from this widget. Um, you can view the related records, which will allow you to see the activities. And we only have one activity. So we could also select the point that has the activity, um, go into options here, show related records and see the related data that way to see all of the activities associated with the point we selected. Um, and from here, you can also go to options, export to CSV. And it's a simple process. It, it happens really fast. So that's just a nice way to kind of see your data in a different format if you'd like to. Um, the attribute table is nice. And one thing it does do is, um, I'm gonna clear this out. One thing it does do is um, it has filter by map extent open automatically. So um, let me show you, if I kind of get a couple traps out of my way in the map pane, you're gonna just see it has the one that is in our view right now. So if you're missing data and you're like, where is it? You can either unpress filter by map extent and get all of the features. And here we can see the feature that Jenny made and it's way out of the way. It's over in um, Colorado. You could double click it and get to it really fast that way. And if, since I'm in Colorado now, I could press home extent. So there's a lot of um, different features that web apps have that you can kind of figure out intuitively or just explore, you know, you can click in the map frame. It's a great, it's a great tool to just play with your data explore it rather. Um, automatically, we only have these three layers in the attribute table, but you can view any of these layers in it as well. So if I wanted to view the trapping segments in the feature in the attribute table, I could press these three dots and say view an attribute table. And that's just a, another feature that we have here. Um, and the last one we have is the uh, base map switcher, where you can um, just change your base map. It wasn't loading for me this morning, so I'll check on this later, but um, all you have to do is uh, click the one you want and the base map should switch relatively fast, if you're lucky. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can view the land under your trap with the imagery, and that can be nice. All right, so let's go back to the slideshow, please, Jenny. So some of the um, caution areas that you might want to be aware of are to press save after you make your edits. To edit data, you need to have a field worker role in the portal, and I, I or Jenny can help you with that. Make sure when you enable your filters that you turn them off or turn them on and just make sure you know that the data is not gonna show you everything that's there if one is enabled. And if it lags, just refresh the web app. So we're gonna go for our reporting app now and let me um, share my screen again. So the reporting app is a very similar feel to the editing web app. It just has different widgets available, kind of just for data interaction, not editing. We have filters, a base map switcher. We have the attribute table. And we have the layer list legend combo where you can turn on and off layers. And we just have the um, trapping layer in here. We don't have the QC layer, but if you want, you can view the ones that have QC flags either by clicking them and getting a pop-up or viewing the attribute table and looking at that field name. This one also has the filter by map extent enabled so deselect if you don't want to see that. Um, so just quickly, since it's it's not complicated, you we have a few different other options in the filters. We have install date. So we can choose different days to kind of view the um, traps that were installed between the dates that we choose. So let's do between April 5th and May 10th. You can see our attribute table filtered and so did our map to just show us the ones that were installed at that date, between those dates rather. 
And the filters build off of each other. So once you build a filter, it's just going to show you the rest of these that only have attributes present in these two features. So our schedule status options are current or due. So we can select due and we would just have that one in the attribute table now. Choose trap site type, um, view different um, ranges of the data, whether they're airport outlying. Um, and then we have trap type and lure. So any filter you want to see your attribute table and map filter, just enable in that widget. Um, and from here, we can also export the data we filtered and view related records. just like our last web app. And we can also print from this one. So let's say I want to include this in the map. Just turn on whatever layers you want to be in there. And we can use our print widget. You can change the map title to be um, whatever you have in your map. So let's say it's a bad map title, but you get it. Um, you can choose your layout, um, landscape or portrait. Map only is just kind of going to be a screenshot, kind of similar to that. And you can change your format as well. Under advanced, you can include the legend, change your scale bar, make a few other adjustments. And then you can click print and it'll make you a map. We have discovered for some unknown reason, this works best in Chrome. So if your map is failing to print, um, just open it within Chrome and it should work. Um, you just click it once it's done and it'll give you your map at which point you can save and export, send to other people if you'd like. And I'll take any questions if you have them. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks, Jenny. Great job. Um, the only thing that I didn't see, I think, unless I missed it, was delete. And I did see the button in oh, the editor view. You could, if anyone was interested, delete the point I added today. Sure. I can share my screen again real quick. And, like. and I, it's, you know, obviously this is just like check your data. It, it's not meant to insult, but um, I do like to remind folks that deleting data is very dangerous. <clears throat> and I know this would probably be Nick, but my rule of thumb is to ask myself three times. <laughs> do what you need to do, but that's my rule uh, personally. Uh, oh, I don't need this. Do I need to delete this? Like I just pause, I would pause there on that. But the ability to delete is available in the editing web app where it is not available to field surveyors using the mobile app. And just a kind of a fail safe in the web app, if you delete something, we'll have another pop up just like we did for, would you like to save this that you didn't save? Um, there'll be a pop up that says, are you sure you wanna delete it? That's a nice little feature too. That's your third question, maybe. Do you want to delete this? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, any anything you want to say to, you, to those attending? I know you're really trying to get everyone trained up this week. If there aren't questions, maybe you have something you want to share or comment on? Uh, no, primarily, I just I want to thank you and Melanie for putting together a really nice training. I know this has been um, really helpful for me personally and uh, the new technicians that just got started last week. We've been throwing a lot of stuff at them. So yeah. This, this has been a big help, so we appreciate it very much. Well, you're very welcome. We don't always do this together, but you're a small team and it felt like a good idea. And, and just a reminder that it is recorded. And so I'll make sure, Nick, I'll, I'll alert you and Alec and, um, and anyone else that needs to know, but I will make sure that this gets up as fast as possible. So you have it as a reference point too, to return to. I know these go really quickly. And, and then we say, do you have any questions? And it's kind of a whirlwind. So we want to make sure that obviously, you know, to, you can come to us, but also that you have a reference point if you need to.
Hey, thank, thanks a lot, Jenny and Melanie. This is really helpful. I need to run to another meeting real quick, but I know Alec will be watching this video. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you've been a quiet group and a very um, a nice participant group who came early and ready to learn. And thank you, thank you, thank you for all of that. And have a great rest of your day and good luck out there.